Bombing, episode 47. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bombing Podcast. That's right. Number 47. <laughs> welcome, folks. Yep. Bombing Podcast. This is a comedy podcast uh, where we talk about stand-up comedy. And other things. A lot of other things. A lot of other stuff. We're comedians that live in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, we bomb a lot. Yeah. I'm and Hayden Wyckoff. I'm Ryan Jennings. Follow us on Instagram. Follow the podcast that's on Instagram now. That's right. Bombing Podcast. And make sure to email us at bombingpodcast at gmail.com. Yes, please. No one talks to us. Let's get it started. Speaking about bombing, I bombed twice in a row last night. That wasn't a great feeling. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. I still feel ashamed yeah. for that. You down in the dumps about it? No, not down in the dumps. Just like uh, it's just like it, that, that yuck. Yeah, it's it's a yucky feeling. Yeah, it's not great. I'm in the grocery store today, just walking around, just like they know, like <laughs> they know I bombed, you know. And uh, yeah, you know, two shows, shows, open mics, but still, it's like you know, you, you, when you got two back to back, you do you if you buy bombed the first one, and then I was like, okay, and then I'm going into the second one with like bomb energy. Mm-hmm. But, but but was still like maybe I could turn it around. Didn't. It's almost like it's it's almost like doubling down in blackjack, you mm -hmm. know? Because you sit there, you're, like especially if you're doing two or like three spots a night. If you fuck up on the first one, you're like, all right, I got one more. I I, I can bring it back. Yep. And then you're putting all your cards. It's like double or nothing, and then you still fall short. Uh, it's like double double the uh. It's bad. Uh. It was bad. You're looking at oncoming traffic a little too nicely. <laughs> <laughs> dude a fucking bomb is the worst dude it's the worst and like a lot like it's not it was, obviously it wasn't as bad as I play it up in my head you know yeah I tried it okay but it like I I, I knew that I wasn't doing the best I could do mm -hmm. and especially when you bomb at one place and then you go to a different place and do it again just it's just you can't get that ick off you. Mm -mm. It's hard to get that bomb off you. Dude. Yeah, and then and then you got to go into like start your work week with mm -hmm. that energy. And you're like, ah, oh, now I'm, I didn't even I didn't even kill. Now I'm back at work. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like now we got another four days till our next show or something. So, I just I just have to ride a bomb now for four days. Yep, you're kind of you're you're in bomb mode. You're co you're coasting on by. Yeah, that's rough. I can't relate. I've been on like a two week tear. So th things are going good. I'm doing pretty good for all Hayden, which means I'm due for a a a missile. Dude. That's what that means. <laughs> yeah, you can never do too well for too long, cause dude, no. dude, it, it it always happens. Like the second that you start thinking, like I might actually be hot shit at this. I might be am good. I, what am I? A great comic? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I should be doing close. That same night. Yeah. That same night, you just eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. So I'm I'm probably due for one, but I'm flying high. We're on like two opposite ends of the know. of the thing. I was flying high, but then yeah, it, I was due. Mm -hmm. I had to. What was it called? I came in, paid the piper, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, man. I had to come in and pay that debt. Yeah, dude. I've been on like a two week tear. I don't know why. I've just been feeling good getting on stage. I've like brought up some, like I, I I like fixed some old bits, doing some new bits that are working. So yeah, man. Bro. Bombing, dude. There's no feeling like it. You can't explain it to someone who who's not a comedian. No. But and, and they can imagine what it's like, like because that's the fear. That's why people don't do it. Mm -hmm. They can imagine what it's like, but like, dude, when you're up there and it's not going well, and you're only a minute and a half in, and you have, you know, maybe you're doing like an eight minute set, and dude, you're you're, make, like, you're making me like freak out yeah. over here, dude. And you're <laughs> Relax. like. You're like, okay, the first two jokes didn't work, and the the one-off thing I thought of about the room, oh, I joked about the light was weird, mm -hmm. and nobody laughed. Okay, um, okay, and then you try to, like, turn, you, like, get more serious, and or, that doesn't work. Yeah, or or, you, or you, go, you go the other way, you, you overdo it, you, like, yeah. you overstand up, and then it just makes it so much worse. Yeah. And, and you're just stuck there. And then you're just praying for the light. You're just oh. like, please fucking light me. And then every time, every time the joke doesn't work, you go into the next joke with, yeah, with lower energy. With don't work energy, yeah, yeah. dude. It's a, it's a snowball, dude. That's why I actually I started doing something uh, recently just to like try it out. Um, like like I've started str like structuring my set a little differently. I used yeah. to do like 
like the first uh, almost half would just be all like brand new ideas, whatever. And then I close with like the stuff I was real like confident with. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, always, I've, I've almost had to like, I don't know how to explain. It. I've had to like move it around a little bit to where, cause like if you can get like a, like, like a pop, like right off the beginning, you can kind of ride that a little bit. So I'll do that's why I've always started with crowd work. Yeah. Sort of riffing. So stuff. if I, I like, I can get, if I can get that initial joke to hit, I can, I can throw a little like, like new ideas or ones that I don't know is going to work kind of in the middle and sandwich it and then, and then end on stuff I know is going to work. And it leads to like a, a more even set yep. versus like trying to build up from nothing. If you start with that pop, you, you that you like, you, 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 get, you get a little bit of like grace. You, you do. Know? Cause then if you, and then like, if you do your second joke and it doesn't go very well, you're the, still riding that first one. The crowd is still like, Oh, well he's funny. So it's, yeah, he is, but we know he's funny. So yeah. it's fine. Yeah, dude. So I've had to start opening with bangers instead of just like straight to brand new ideas. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good tactic. Learning something new every day, man. That's why I've 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 done I've always started with uh like a something about the room mm -hmm. or a callback to someone a joke someone else did just because that that always gets a laugh but if it's funny enough. And it makes you seem funny cuz they're like, "Oh, he he just thought of that." Yeah. And it's like, "Oh, he's like really paying attention." Mhm. Mm so you do that, and then you start to go into your jokes, and you know one works, one doesn't work. But they're like, "Yeah, he's fine." Mm -hmm. And then, and then a lot of it is like your attitude, because if I mean if you're up there, even if you're like bombing, because I've had sets where I've been like not doing well, but I've just been in a, I was in a great mood, mm -hmm. so I was like, "Oh, that didn't work." You know those like weird throwaways mm -hmm. you can do. Um, yeah, a lot of it's about the mood, because like. If you go up there and you acknowledge it, you're just like, dude, yeah, it didn't work. Fuck you. Here's the next joke. And like, you just go back at him. They'll kind of forgive you a little yeah, bit. They will. Cause they'll be like, oh, he's trying. Mm -hmm. At least he's trying. Yeah. There's all those little like, um, like get out of jail card. Things. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can say like, uh, you know, well, never doing that joke again. And mm -hmm. then people go, ha, ah, cause mm -hmm. it, cause it sucked. Yeah. Yeah, so he's not going to do it. All those, all those little cheat cards. Yeah. Little, just those throwaways that this oh. guy knows. Then. <laughs> 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 little cheats. This guy knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, dude. I, can't, I hate those though. I hate those. Those are the worst. <laughs> if but, you got, if you got to pull those out, then it's like you're having a bad night. Yeah. Fuck man. Oh, I haven't had to use it. This guy knows in a while, dude. This, this guy knows what I'm talking hey, about. This guy knows what I'm talking about. And he's just sitting there like, <sighs> yeah, dude, just. Those are the worst. <laughs> but when they're when you're in that moment and one of those lines is there to grab, I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing it, dude. Low hanging fruit. <laughs> give me that, dude. Give, give me that. that. Please give me that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, things have been going real well on my end, man. I've, it's 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 been neat. I've yeah, been, you've been getting better. I I haven't had like a run in a couple of months. I told you this in the car the other day. You had, you did so good at a show like as like last week. Um. That I when I followed you, I I was like, oh fuck, yeah, yeah, nice. that was it, Badger and Jam, and yeah. like you were doing, you were good from start to finish, and like it, it, everything was working, you were funny, and and uh, I had to come up right after you, and I was like kind of low energy that night, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh oh fuck, like I gotta, <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go, yeah, and uh, did all right, but yeah man, yeah dude, it's it's cool, it's cool to see each other doing well yeah dude. instead of going up and bombing every night remember when we do that dude it's it's crazy to see like just in a year like we're almost at episode 50 52 which will, will which will have been a year yeah and e even from like 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 january to now it's it's we're leaps and bounds ahead of where we do we used to go up like and just just bomb all the time yeah like it was expected like, I don't know about you, but I walk up on stage and be like, this is not going to work, but let's try it out. I would, I would be, we'd be driving to the, the club. Knowing we're going to bomb. I'm like, I'm going to feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> after this. It was like, it was like on purpose punching yourself in the nose. Yeah. And then doing it and like bombing. Yeah. And then just a quiet car ride home. Yeah. And then just the delete the set. Don't even listen to it. <laughs> you know, it's bad when you just don't listen yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, not this week. Uh, Oh yeah, but dude, we're dude, we're getting better. I know it's it's, but it's, it's fucking it, brutal. I, I yeah, it's look, it's a meat, it's a meat grinder, but it's cool to see like like the bomb is slowly starting to become like the not the expectation, you know? Yeah, it's starting to become like something that just happens to, you and you're like ah. Oh. But we spent so long sitting in that chair, that that bomb chair, 
that it's so familiar that I'm kind of like, you're not like fine with it, but like, you know how to deal with it. I, yeah, I can take them it, off. Yeah, instead of like just staring at a wall for like three hours when you get home, you, you're just like, you can, you can kind of brush it off a little you bit. Just, you just take a cold shower. Yeah, dude. And you sit in the shower like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, it's fucking you, 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 brutal. You have your hand against the wall, you're just like, oh, <sighs> oh fuck. Dude, a bomb is so brutal, dude. I, you, you just can't explain it, man. But now, yeah, it's like, um, I can take a bomb. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, with the tri with the tricks and tips and stuff, like I can work, I can kind of work around a bomb yeah. to where it's not just like I'm up there naked. You know, mm -hmm. I can work around it and know I'm bombing, but kind of try to, you know, find a path through the bomb mm -hmm. instead of just taking it to the face. <laughs> you just shovel to the head. Yeah, that's why. Like, uh, like, like we've 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 like expanded so much in this last year I'm, I'm excited like like moving forward to start hitting those club mics yeah that's gonna be neat because like I, I, I kind of feel like I, I could go up there like prepared for it like mm -hmm. I've got dude I've got what is it three minutes at, like three the minutes. improv or something. I, I in the bag dude yeah got that easy if we don't have three minutes then yeah. we're not it shouldn't, we shouldn't be in this business yeah dude yeah starting next year 2023 it's uh, the whole year is is focused on getting into the clubs yeah and we'll keep doing the open mics just to stay for you know oh yeah that's not going away no it's not going no. away but we are it is every week we are going to the club mics and emailing the comedy store getting mm -hmm. to that potluck going to the factory and hey five, and five five six years from now we might have gone to the store open mic like like once or twice each. I know. That's crazy. I know, because it's you just never, they never <laughs> let people in there. Dude, that mic is so wild. The first week they brought it back, I, I emailed and I got in. I haven't heard back since. Yeah. You think I, you, you think, and I did good. I did good. I had a good set. You think they just didn't like me? Or do you think that 300 people a week sign up for that thing? I think it's that. <laughs> I just think so many people sign up for that one mic. Yeah. It's the hottest ticket in town. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get in. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We just got to keep emailing. Yeah, man. We'll figure it out. Or not. Let's just kill ourselves, dude. Yeah, okay. You know where it's going to be in super important where we don't bomb is at our new, the show that we have booked in two weeks. Yes. Yeah, I think it's like a week, actually. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's like one week. And Damn. It, it'll, it'll be like four days by the time this comes out. But we are going to be at Ha Ha Comedy Club in North Hollywood on the 22nd. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a comedy contest. Um, the winner gets two hundred dollars and a spot at the improv. Mm -hmm. So and I don't know how many there's probably going to be like 10, 10, 12 people there. And um, yeah, if I, everyone does five minutes. Mm -hmm. There's uh, three judges and also the crowd pipes in with applause at the end. Yeah, it's going to be like a legit like at Ha Ha's Comedy Club, a yeah. legit contest yeah man it's gonna be nice so so if you are in if you're watching this and you're in los angeles please 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 i'm, I'm begging you five we need five people <laughs> come, on come on out come on out haha's comedy club december 22nd yeah check out our instagram pages for information yeah dude that's gonna be cool one of us has to win because we need a win here on the bombing podcast yeah man we need a, we'll make a trophy that means we it's win. next week we got like we got like five more mics basically Damn. until the show we'll do like four or five more mics until that show okay so bring your a game dog yeah yep oh man you know what else is a crazy part of that goes into like stand up for me is like having like a good day yeah you ever have a shit day and then you go to a mic and then you're in a shit mood and it kind of throws you off not not as often as I know I notice it with you. It's like yeah. it's like noticeable. I, yeah, yeah. This the second that I like I walk in, I'm like already kind of in a better mood. It's happened before. Yeah. But like, you wear it on your sleeve. Like if you had a shitty day, you go up. You're like, hey guys. I can't fake it. I can't. Yeah. It's that. Yeah, you're right. It, it my my moods affect me more than yours affect you. Yeah. Which uh, I don't know about that, but. Yeah, but like if I'm having like a if I'm having a bad day, and I have a, sh a mic that night, I, I already know it's fucked, and there's not a lot I can do to change it. Mm -hmm. I I try my best. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just you. That's yeah, just that's just you, me. That's you being you. I try my best. Like like I'll go to the gym, and run, mm -hmm. hit a sauna or something, and or meditate and stretch and shit. But uh, 
Yeah, like a really like fifty percent of of whether or not I I do good on stage mm-hmm. is like how I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah. And there's times where I'm just I just feel great, and I go up there and I'm, I'm and, and it shows and you kill. Yeah. yeah. And then there's times where I'm just like I do not feel great, and that shows also. And you know I'm sure people are like, "What's up? Why is he? What, what's wrong? Was he's in a weird mood?" That's just I don't know. I get in those moods. I always looked at it like, um, cause like, you know, I've gone into mics like after a shitty day and, a, mm-hmm. and had kind of a shitty attitude, but I always looked at it like, look, if I, br- if I bring that up there, uh, it's not going to go well. And that's, it's going to double my bad mood. So like, let's, yeah. let's leave it, leave it at the door and, and it, and best case scenario, this goes well and I cheer myself up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I can't, I'm, I'm, I have a hard time leaving it at the door. Hmm. I think. Do you think there's anything you could do to work on that, or do you think you're, you're just stuck like that? I do my my very best to to uh, maintain some normal level of feeling good, mm-hmm. um, like going to the gym, yeah, or doing things I like doing, listening to music I like, and um, but like the night of the show, mm-hmm. like I'm gonna the, this is how my brain works. Uh, the night of the show, we're, we ha- it's our day off of work, so we got nothing going on. So the night before, I have to get like a good night's sleep. Okay. And then I wake up and like I'll eat something, and then I'm gonna go to the gym and like work. I'm gonna work out and then run, um, three or four miles, and then I'm gonna hit a sauna, and then uh, just like go over my jokes in the fucking sauna. It's like a whole thing I gotta do, just to get on stage and. Do and perform. That sounds like a lot. You know what I'm gonna do? What? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have probably a beer with breakfast. Yeah. And, and like watch two movies and then go to the, and then we'll go down there. That's what you will do. Yeah. I I'm and, so and, jealous that I and, that you can just do that. And I guarantee you, I'll be in a great mood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, so, I don't I don't get it. Like, <laughs> you'll you'll wake up hungover. Yeah. Beers with breakfast. Beers with two movies. Mm. Pops early. Get there. Great mood. Do yeah. do good. No, I, I'm not gonna get. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. I'm not gonna get like, uh, like like too fucked up. No, of course. Because I've run into that so many times. Like, uh, like where you just you have a couple too many drinks before, That's bad. and then you go and you, you like you, you know going on stage, not even like like buzzed, uh, but you're like you're you, drunk. You're like a little drunk. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been drunk. On I've stage. been drunk on stage. It's not great. Oh my god! I'd say the best sets I've ever done was like like Stone Cold Sober mm-hmm. or like a beer before or something like that. Yeah, it's I I I I jumped off that train months ago. I'm done doing that. It's not because I kept I, I kept being like yeah I'll have a couple of pops for the show and it kept not working. So yeah. I just that's that's done. Yeah, and dude, I'll have a beer with eggs though. There is <laughs> there is like dude like a drink yeah. or two. Yeah. And then you go up on stage, like the greatest. Perfect, perfect. Like two, like two drinks. Yeah. You're like loose. You're good. You're. But then you anything past that. Yeah. Or if you have to do a show later. Yeah. It's, that, that's too many drinks, it's, it, dude. It's it, it's too many. You 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 do honestly, you do your best work when you just go up there and like run your bits. Yeah. Sober, because like that that you you're in the most control then. Uh-huh. You know. And uh-huh. look. I'm as guilty as the next guy. It's fun getting a little buzz and then going on stage. Yeah. Ha, I'm slinging jokes, but like, like brass tacks into the day, you can't be you can't be getting shit faced and going to mics all the it's time. It's not sustainable. No, it's not. It'll it'll like that'll get you through. I don't know if you're just starting out like a, like a couple of months. Maybe yeah. you're getting over like the stage fright or something. And it is fun, but it's like, are you like do you? And it be, does work. Get over that stage fright. a little bit, but it's like if you want to be serious about it, you got to leave that. You you, you got to hop off that train. A long time ago. Yeah. You had to leave that. Dude, something about like stand up and alcoholism. Just they go hand in hand. It's perfect. <laughs> it's, perfect. It's, it's perfect. It's the, it's the perfect fit, man. Because a couple of drinks, like you're just so loose mm-hmm. and you're just willing to, you'll just say whatever. Like it's great. Yeah. But. But also you forget, you forget your bits, you know. Yeah. You stumble through one. Mm-hmm. You start a bit, bail on it. Or you do the punchline. Start, start a bit in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you remember you have like two tags before you're supposed to say this, but you already said it, and you're like, "Fuck." Yeah. And then you're and then you're on stage thinking like, 
you fucking drunk piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, couldn't, yeah. You couldn't, mm. have, couldn't have two or three <laughs> whiskey sours. Had to have eight. Had to have eight. Had to have eight. Had to have eight whiskey sours. That was that was a cool that like not cool, but that was like a like a funny lesson to learn. Because that's something I kind of wrap my head around, like you know, towards the beginning of this year, mm-hmm. I kind of put two and two together. I was like, all right, you gotta stop this, dude. Yeah, it can't be. It can't be every set. <laughs> no, dude, no. It cannot. If be. you want to be serious about it, it, you can't be. Can't be having eight whiskey sours, man. No, dude. Can't be having eight whiskey sours. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> that is it. That is it. Oh, you practice your lines now. It doesn't look like you're practicing shit. This, if you don't get this take right, I'm going to blow your fucking, fucking brains out. <laughs> I was walking to work the other day. Mm-hmm. You know, I take the train. And the train was a little late. And so I get off the train and I'm walking to work. And, uh, and you know, I probably got like another five minute walk. But like I'm already supposed to be there. So I'm like, I'm five minutes late pretty much. And I start to, I'm like, oh, fuck. And I start to like kind of walk fast, you mm-hmm. know. And I start to get like kind of like hot because I'm walking fast. I got a hoodie on, and and then I was like, well, I was like, wait, who fucking cares, dude? <laughs> yeah, dude. Just, what am I gonna show up sweaty? Yeah. Eight minutes late to the day job that fucking doesn't care about me. Mm-hmm. To what, what, what? So I just fucking stopped running, and I was like, I'm just gonna show up. And then I showed up like eight minutes late. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. Yep. Doesn't fucking matter. And I like. I don't know, but like that's me though. Like I, oh, I need to be on time. Mm-hmm. I gotta do. I got to do my best. Yeah, and I gotta be on time. I've, dude, I've always been the same way. I don't, I don't think I've ever been like late to work. Yeah, I don't know what that is. And I, I like I can't do a bad job. I have to do a good job. It or, like or it, else it eats it. It's like a, it's like annoying. I I cannot stand seeing something that I could do better done poorly. Mm-hmm. That's like that's like every job I've ever had, man. Yeah. And, but then, and then there's like the other side of it where it's like, it, dude, it doesn't fucking really matter mm-hmm. like that much. Sure, you're eight minutes late once. Don't. Yeah. You know, I'm not showing up 30 minutes late every day. You, well, you, you're going to fire me? Yeah. Really? So I'm eight minutes late, but then I just do the greatest job ever yeah. and I'm underpaid for it. Like yeah, you're man. lucky to have me kind of thing. That's how it's, I felt at every job. Yeah. And my, my the work ethic always, the work I do is always... Um, like I've gotten away with so much. Well, dude, it's like it, just because they like they know like oh he's 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 a good shit. That's the payoff of that's every job like like we've ever had. It's like you go in, you're like the best employee, and then the the reward for that is never they pay you more. It's no. a, it's they just let you get away with mm-hmm. shit like that. Yep, it's never like, it's never more money. No, it's never more. But it's like it's like perks. They're like, all right, I'll let that slide. Yeah, yeah, I'll let this slide. That can slide, and then every like. Like once a year, you call in that favor. You're mm-hmm. like, last minute, uh, I just I just need tomorrow off. Yeah, and they're like, fine. Yeah, okay. that, that's what all that hard work buys mm-hmm. is that one. Just when I you, I gotta like I have a show at the Improv. Yeah. tomorrow, and I need to get ready for it. I will not. I cannot come to work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then you get that okay. But this is your only t- oh, the only time. Of I, course, I called that in at my work for the comedy store. Yeah, the first time I got the comedy store, I was like, I gotta leave early, and it wasn't even like a like, can I leave? It was like, I'm I'm leaving this place early. Yeah, and you need to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. And it was and it was fine. Yeah, totally fine. I actually got a cool boss. Good for the first time in like forever. Right on. So that's neat. Yeah, your boss is really cool. Yeah. I'm only, I'm only met her once, but she came to our she show. She came to one of my shows, yeah. Dude. And I didn't know it was your boss, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it was her and her daughter, man. I didn't know your boss was there, and I went up, and I, I did... Did the most heinous stuff. <laughs> you like, your worst. I did a whole, like, like animals eating joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what goes in a toilet joke. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I just went, I, I just did a whole, I mean, I crushed. But, yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, you did very well. Your boss thinks I'm funny, but yeah. also I'm sure she thinks I'm just disgusting. <laughs> and then we, you, you know, you go up and then the show's over and you're like, hey, Ryan, this is my boss. And I was like, dude, <laughs> I had to change around some material. I don't know. Uh, what are you going to do? She was a nice lady. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, why would you do that? I didn't think you were going to do that. <sighs> Did it hurt? Did it hurt? Mm, that hurt, dude. Oh. 
Ah, dude, I had to know. How bad did it hurt? It, yeah, it kind of hurt, dude. Dude, that'll kill a mouse. That, yeah, that kills a mouse. It just fucking snaps my finger, dude. Ow. Just killed my pointer. That's, I, I had to, I, dude, I, it was sitting there. I had to hit it. You had to hit it. I had to hit it, dude. I had to find out. We shouldn't have got these. No. Because you know what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave them around the apartment at night. So when you wake up. Are we, do, are we starting a prank war here, dude? So when you wake up to take a midnight pee. Yeah. You're going to step on a, a mouse trap, dude. Huh. What about every time? Every time you tell a bad joke on the podcast, you have to uh, you mouse have to, trap. Yeah, you have to mouse trap yourself. <laughs> oh no, dude! These are dangerous. Yeah, like like if it's if it's really bad, you got to mouse trap yourself. Okay, like if you bring up a topic that goes nowhere. Yeah, a dead end topic. Yeah, you gotta get trapped. Fucking rat trap, dude. I could have used a few of these in my past, dude. I like that they made the uh, the the lever like look like cheese. Yeah. Like you're supposed to leave a little something on there, but they still made it look like cheese. Like the rat's gonna go, oh, that's cheese. Yeah, like how stupid. That's. Like, <laughs> I know rats are pretty stupid, but even a rat would be like, dude, that's not cheese. That's not cheese. No way, that's cheese. It doesn't even look like cheese. No, dude. you're supposed. Yeah, you're supposed to put like some cheese on there, and yeah. that, that's what they look at. They're just like. Rats shouldn't know by now that these are like... Yeah, like how long we've been doing this? This seems so, like, I don't know, so obviously a trap. It's a trap. It's dude. a trap, man. It's so obviously a trap. I'm, I'm surprised they don't paint like a naked lady rat on the wood, <laughs> you know? Like like a lady rat in like lingerie? Yeah. Because that, they, dude, they go for that way before the cheese. Yeah, dude. I'll take one more rip before you go into this next segment, yeah. When in Rome. We're not, we're not in Rome. I was in Rome once. Did you, like, do things when you were there? That, like, because you, cause you're in Rome, you should do? Yeah. What did you do in Rome that would, like, help the saying, when in Rome? Um, you, you can smoke inside at a bunch of places there. And you did? Yeah, I, I, I smoked cigarettes and What kind of basic. cigarettes? Uh, weird European cigarettes. Nice. They, they didn't have the normal American cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, over there on every pack of cigarettes is like a guy with a stoma. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole guy. Or like a picture of like your rotted out gums or something. Yeah. And they're like, dude, don't smoke. And uh, that works about as well as you think it would. It doesn't work Because at all. people still buy cigarettes. Yeah. It's not stopping me, dude. Dude. You could put a picture... Of a dead baby in the toilet, mm -hmm. I'd still buy the cigarettes. And dude, who's 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 dipshit idea was that? Who was sitting around at like the the EU board and was like, you know what's gonna make people stop smoking cigarettes <laughs> is pictures, pictures, pictures. That's gonna do it. How about stop making cigarettes? Maybe that'll stop. You hear people? New, do you hear New Zealand's doing that? They are. Yeah. The starting starting next year, anyone born after two thousand and nine can't buy cigarettes why 2009 they just i who dude i don't know who it's it's a stupid law anyway who cares i don't like that yeah. you should be able to buy them. yeah exactly man you should totally they should totally be able to make cigarettes mm -hmm. and you should buy them whenever you want and you should be able to buy like like a billion if you want yeah, yeah. like if you want to buy a billion at a time you should be able to mm -hmm. uh but like it but oh but it's bad then yes you should also be able to not smoke cigarettes yeah and dude, dude, who's that stopping, dude? How, how many drinks did you have when you were under twenty-one? Oh, dude, so many. That's been, the most. That's the most. That's been a law here for decades, and it doesn't stop anybody. No, nope. So all you're gonna do is just <laughs> is like is just make kids like like deal with strangers to get cigarettes. Like that's the only thing that's gonna happen. It's not gonna fix it. Yeah, they're gonna have to talk to a weird old guy yeah. that lives in the neighborhood. Dude, the the hubris, the hubris to think. I can get people to stop smoking. Dude, who had that idea? I can stop smoking. This, my idea will stop people smoking cigarettes. That's never going to stop, dude. No. And who cares? Yeah, dude. Why is that? Like, why, why, there, why there, are you dying on that hill, man? There are cigarettes out there. People will smoke them. Yeah. 
What? Who care? Oh, but they'll die. Let them die. Fucking let them. Smoke, if you smoke, you die. Yeah, why, why do you care so much? Oh, but they'll get, can't, that's harmful to them. I don't care about them. Let them. Let them? Let them get cancer. Do what they want to do, man. Yeah. I don't understand any of that shit. No, man. I mean, we grew up in a small town in a time where you could pile fucking six dudes in the back of your truck, in the truck bed, and it wasn't illegal. Now now it's illegal. Mm. Now you, in Tennessee, you can't buy cigarettes until you're 21. You have to wear a seatbelt. I don't know. I feel like 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 the older I get, like the more, the more everyone else is like telling other people what to do. It's like what? That, stop it! Mm -hmm. Stop! Like that used to not be the thing. And like we're not old, but like within our lifetime, I've seen things go from like 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 bad to worse. Yeah. And do things like move. stop telling me what to do? Like, can you just leave me alone, man? Let me do what I want to do. Yeah. And things move so quickly now. That, you know, we're only mid-twenties, but we're already old. Like, we're already old guys. Dude, I feel I cannot wait to be an old man. <laughs> ah, dude, I'm going to make the best old dude. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm going to make the perfect old man. What do you, like, what, you're going to, like, play into being an old guy? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I, just, I always felt, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm always grumpy in the first place. Yeah. So, like. You're like that, an old young guy. I think so, yeah. Sometimes you can be an old young guy. Yeah. I feel like a Carter. You are a, Carter. A lot of the times. You are a Carter from Peter, Family Guy. Peter Schmidt. Yeah, just with none of the success yet. Dungarees or jeans. Dungarees or jeans. <laughs> you want to be, I've heard you say before, that you want to be leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, no, that's a joke, dude. That's the, that's the saddest fucking existence of all time. Dude, if your goal is just going to Vegas and drinking yourself to death with a prostitute, that's... I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But they, they fall in love, though. Yeah, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes a lot, man. It's a good movie. It's a, I, just, I just like that. I like the idea of that movie that someone's just like, you know what? Fuck this. And yeah. he just goes to Vegas and drinks himself to death. It's kind of like, he's, he's almost like a, like a folklore hero. You're like, dude, did you hear yeah. about that guy? You're rooting for him. Yeah, you're like. Even though he's making all the wrong decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still like, hey. Good for you. No one's telling him what to do. Mm -mm. He decides. I decide. I decide, yeah. No one's telling him not that he can't smoke cigarettes. Yep. He's going to smoke a card. Dude, and, that's, and that scene where he's in the liquor store and he's like, <laughs> he's like dancing and like grabbing bottles and stuff, oh. <laughs> getting them off the shelf, throwing them in the cart. Oh, it's an evil scene. It's an evil scene, man. Dude, people rip on Nick Cage. Like, I think he, I think he's a national treasure. Rat trap. Oh, really? Rat trap. Really? I like that one. He's like, he, no, I know. I get. I got the joke. I got the joke. He's like, he's. I got the joke because he was in National Treasure. Rat trap. I think that maybe I think that deserves a rat trap. That was a little. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to let the viewers decide, but by then it's these will be broken yeah, and it's, gone. It's too late. I'll give you that. Okay. You almost had to rat trap. I almost had to. That was clever enough. Okay, I'll give you that though. All right, I'll take it. You're on like thin. Uh, I know. I get. I get it. I get it. Like I get it. Thin ice. I know. I know when to stop pushing. I get okay, it. I get right, it. All right. <laughs> More like. I'm not. I'm, I'm, what was that? Nothing. Nothing. Sorry, you want to no, say that again? <laughs> no, 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 no. Was it worth it? No, no, no. It's not. It's not. See now that there's. Is it worth a rat trap? Now, now that there's the threat of the trap, <laughs> I, I'm starting to think twice about some of these jokes. <laughs> Ah, uh, dude. Uh, we should have these every podcast. We should. We really cut down on the silliness. Yeah. I was uh, I was gonna see more like Con Hair because he like he has super long hair in that movie. Oh, dude, trap, dude, trap, trap! I gave you so many chances, dude. <sighs> You're right. Oh. See, maybe next time you'll think twice before. Doing something hack. You can't be hack on here. Yeah, no, that's that's a great deterrent. Um, Con hair? I thought because... And you set yourself up. That was that's the <sighs> wildest part. It, look, look, that's fine. We're new to the traps. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure it out. Fuck, dude. We shouldn't have got these. Ha, <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta set a trap, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you excited about Santa coming here in a few weeks? Like he's gonna be like like here, like in our apartment. He's gonna be here. Yeah, he's gonna be here. He's gonna be in this whole building. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. Yeah. We don't have a chimney though, so is he gonna come through the bathroom ceiling fan that pushes the poo and vomit smell out? Yeah, yeah, probably. He's gonna come through that. Yeah, that's the, that's the only like roof access he has. That's all the roof access we have so, is in the bathroom. Yes, yeah, so we'll have, we'll have to like make sure the door is open so he can uh, like get in and like leave the presents and then get back out because he's got like he's got <laughs> a lot of places to go. Dude, so many, so many places. Dude, L.A. alone that's got to take him. I don't know, at least an hour. I mean, it, to do the whole world, it's got to be at least a whole night. Yeah. So you know, we got to leave some. Uh, some stuff out for him. Yeah. Like some pops. Yeah, let's leave Santa some drinks, dude. Yeah. Dude, we're all adults here. Dude, he's sitting there, like, his diabetic ass is eating all these mm-hmm. all these cookies and drinking milk. And he finally, he gets to our apartment. He's like, finally. Finally. Some Hell booze. yeah. He just goes, woo. Finally yeah. some booze. It's fucking freezing out yeah, there. Yeah, and dude, look, look. Drinking and slaying is not a big deal. No. It's not as big a deal as people make no. it. No. Once, once a year? Yeah. Not that bad. You can drink and slay. You can drink and slay, You'll dude. be all right. I mean, he's not really... He's got, what? Uh, Dasher, Prancer, Donald, mm-hmm. Blitzen. He's got all those guys like like slaying for him. Mm-hmm. He's not really even in the slayer seat, no. man. Especially if you got Rudolph at the front. Oh, yeah. He knows what he's doing, he's, man. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, man. Rudolph knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Knows what he's doing. And worst case scenario, you uh, like you you have the the sleigh bags that deploy if you if you get a SUI. Uh huh. Yeah. But that's you know that comes with the job. It's yeah, dude. It's part of it. I mean, he knew what he was signing up for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure when he hits our apartment, first off, he's gonna be like, "Oh my god, what a cool apartment!" Yeah, he's gonna say it's a cool place. Yeah, and also he likes and subscribes to the uh, podcast. Probably, but I don't know how great the Wi-Fi is in the North Pole, but but when he, he we're gonna leave him some pops. Mm-hmm. And cookies, man. So, who eats cookies? We'll leave him like some fucking Doritos or something. Yeah, dude. Some purple Doritos. Yeah, man. Or or like a pork chops and broccoli. Yeah, we'll leave him a pork chop and then like two tequila sodas and then. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's tight. That is tight. That's tight. Yeah. Wait, we haven't factored factored in whether or not we're getting cold this year. Ah, oh, do you think you're getting cold? Have we been good? I think we've been good. We've like been good. I think I think if Santa saw one of our bombs, he'd be like Cole for sure. See, but is so does that like does what you do professionally factor into whether or not you're like you get Cole or not, or if you're a good person? Because if he sees my bombs on stage, Cole till I die. Cole, dude, if he was, it, 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 dude, if he watched you the last two nights, that's. You're getting that's cold. cold. That's cold. Even if he's watched an episode of this podcast, cold, cold, cold. But also, it's like I've done well on stage. And I guess it just boils down to you know what he's seen. Yeah. If he starts looking like in December, then I'm I'm definitely not getting cold. Yeah. Because I'm on I'm on a tear right now. Yeah. What well, does he look at your entire life, or does I he look? I, I don't know. I, don't, I think he's I think he like just kicks it in Hawaii with his feet up most of the year, and then. Like every December, he gets to work. He yeah. pro- probably doesn't start checking until like like you know late November. Yeah, probably. That 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 makes sense. Checking twice, you know. I mean, you know him. He always checks twice. Yeah. Every, never one. Never once. Every list. How does he like make money? Hmm. How does Santa make money? George Soros. You know, it's weird. The older I get, the more I understand the Grinch. Yeah, what do you what do you understand about the Grinch, Ryan? Ah, you know, just it's all shit. Yeah, it's all just it's, all, it's like what you know. Dude, we'd have a real problem on our hands if the Grinch was a real guy. We would. Like if if, if that's something you had to worry about, like every December you got like a buzz on your phone at the end, and then they were like, "Guys, the Grinch is in Los Angeles. You lock your doors." <laughs> oh shit! Oh, he's here. Fuck! I fucking fucking lock the doors, yeah. dude. Get the gun. We're staying up all night. You imagine we're just watching TV and he busts through. Just 
grabs your shit. Yeah. Grabs your tree. And he can't die. We're like hitting him with a baseball bat. He's like, nah. Nah. And he just leaves. We just got a mess to clean up. Oh. That'd be so shitty. You know I go to the grocery store and I try to get the food. And then I go to the line. There's some old lady dude sitting in the checkout counter blocking up the line with a cart that isn't from the store. It's like, where'd you get the cart from? And she doesn't understand money. How do you make it 80 years old and you don't understand how money works? No, 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 dude, not the trap. Anything but the trap, dude. The other day I was thinking, where's the worst place on earth? And I think it's that place where I do the Hershey squirts. It's the toilet. That's the worst place. Only bad things go toy inside toilets like my face when I'm throwing up and my dump is dumping up and my butthole is throwing up. (laughs) 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 Ah, dude. That was the worst thing I've ever heard. That was super stupid. That was very dumb. Okay, what else, man? Dude, God forbid you click the wrong button on the remote. Yeah. And you gotta buy a, go- a fucking goddamn new TV. <laughs> yeah, dude, because it's just, it ruins it. Dude, why, every remote, there's that one button that you click it, and you gotta, like, like call the Pentagon or something yeah. just, to get, just to get your TV back to normal. It's what, what is that? Why, remotes have, like, 132 buttons on them. Yeah. But you, you click three. Yeah. On... Vol- volume. volume settings, maybe. Maybe. Maybe settings. Yeah, if you're feeling frisky, you'll get yeah. a settings. But there's like there's that one button, you hit it, and then your TV just yeah. just shits out. Ugh. You can't get out of it. Nope. You gotta like hit the weird the hidden buttons on the back of the TV. Yep. Just to get it back to normal. What the hell is that, man? I don't know. I'm just glad we finally have one TV remote. Yeah. Remember that weird time in like two thousand and three where Everyone had four TV remotes for no reason. Like back at the fucking mom's house. Yeah. There, there, there's literally like a thing on the end of the coffee table that had four sticks yeah. coming out. <laughs> four a little, remotes. A little box with four TV remotes. Yeah. Why was that? Why, but one TV. Mm-hmm. Why was that so complicated? Uh, well, one was for like the sound. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One, you'd, you'd be like, how do I turn the TV on? Okay, it's super complicated. Here we go. <laughs> You're right. One would be, j- this is volume only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. God forbid, like, you ever go to, over to, like, your girlfriend's house and they had surround sound? Mm-hmm. Dude, you're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. They, There's they, no they had eight. TV eight remotes. remotes, yeah, yeah, and, and and the other one you didn't you didn't point at the TV. You're like, oh, this one you have to point at the corner. Yeah, why? Over here. Why? <laughs> What's there? Why not? This one you have to point it at the toilet. You have to yeah. go to the other room, the toilet upstairs. You point it at the toilet. And just jiggle the handle, and then then that's what's one channel up, and then that's good. Yeah. <laughs> one was was always the volume. Mm-hmm. One was on. One was just the TV on. Yeah, it turned it on and did nothing else, but had 30 other buttons mm-hmm. on it. And then the other remote just turned the cable box on. So oh, the, yeah, the cable box. You're not even watching TV at this point, and you've touched three remotes. Yeah. And then there would always be that one remote where you're like, what's this one do? And they're like, we don't know. <laughs> but we don't want to throw it away. We're not. It came with, it came with the thing. Which yeah. thing? What the, the, did it, the box or the? Yeah. We don't know. We don't remember. Look, just don't, don't touch that one. <laughs> I don't, but I don't know where to get just a remote. If you want, I imagine they the remotes come with the TVs. Mm-hmm. You know, you, there's no remote store. If you want a new remote, you just gotta fucking get a new TV. Yeah, you have to get a whole new TV, man. I don't know why it's so fucking complicated. Me neither, dude. On a, a remote should be like like this big. It should be like the size <laughs> of like a disc. Yeah, just, and it's just it's on off volume and like maybe channel and that's it. Yep. Fucking five buttons, dude. They had like they they had like the the numbers on there for why? What am I dialing a phone? You don't need numbers anymore. No, you don't need numbers anymore. You don't need. A lot of those remotes have like all the buttons are gray, and but then there's a red button, a yellow button, a and, blue button, and a green button. Yeah, no, you don't need what. Mm-hmm. TVs are not that. You turn it on, and then you just go to Netflix. Yeah, like every. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There, a TV remote should just be one giant Netflix button. <laughs> just a big, it's like, it's like this big. Still just, make them that big. Yeah, yeah, but just Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, go there, please. And then you have one button to switch the HDMI to fucking PlayStation. Yeah, That's dude. it. 
Dude, who's watching cable? And do only old people watch cable? I can't believe cable's still a thing. Dude, me neither. Dude, who's keeping those guys in business? Not me. Everyone, everyone like turns on their TV and it's like an Xbox or a PlayStation, and then maybe like Netflix built in, and mm -hmm. then like that's it. I think just like airports are keeping uh, cable alive. Dude, airports and gyms are the only reason like Fox News exists, yeah. dude. Or like CNN out here. Yeah. Just shit playing in the background. Yeah, dude. Dude, I go like like for my job, I go into all these like all these different people's houses like for deliveries. And dude, the old people always have like like Fox News or CNN just playing in the background. Mm -hmm. Non like it's just on. They're not watching it. It's just on. Just on. Like, dude, turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. You're keeping them alive. Yeah, dude. Turn them off. Those guys need to die. Stop it. I don't know. I, TV is just, I don't know. TV is just Netflix. Mm-hmm. And, and like Hulu. those other places that are just the, doing the same thing as Netflix. Yeah, dude, like Netflix different. Yeah. I've never, I never like paid a cable bill in my entire life. Like even like, even back, back home, like, like all the roommates I ever had, we just had like Hulu, yeah, or Netflix. You know what's weird? It's like there's so many. There's all these different things. There's n but there's never been something that I wanted to watch that then I couldn't. Yeah, and yeah, like any uh, any sports game you wanted to watch, someone would be like, "Yeah, no, I got it pulled up like right here for yeah. free." Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand all the different things. You you can only watch this here, but you can only watch this here. Yeah. I've never. Come across something where I'm like, oh, I want to watch that, but I can't because it's on the thing. Like, you just find it. Yeah, yeah. It's just out there. Dude. Or you, you know a buddy who has the password to the thing. Yeah, yeah. One, it, one, maybe two pages of Google and you're there. Just make it all. The, just do, do one thing. Because mm -hmm. we're all, if I want to watch something, I'll find it. Yeah, it's out there, man. It's so easy, easy to yeah. find. But dude, those days are over. Like, I, sh I don't understand how any cable service is still in business me neither even like yeah like the like the things that we're not paying for you know some new rick and morty some new you know something like that yeah like you said two two google searches mm -hmm. there it is yeah three i remember i got mad when they took uh, star trek next generation off of netflix yeah i got mad for like half a second and then i was like oh wait i have a computer and hands that can, that work you know mm -hmm. just I don't know, man. It's weird. Nothing's it like exclusive anymore. Mm -mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't. Oh, fuck! Why did you do the fingernail? I know, dude. You chose fingernail. Ah, oh, did hurt. that hurt? That hurt so bad. Ah. Oh. Mm. Anyways, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a email. It's bombingpodcast at gmail dot com. You can email us anytime you want. Uh, anything you want, also, and we will read it live on the podcast. Bombing podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to check this week's emails right now. Jesus! Okay, here we go. Bombing podcast at gmail.com. Checking it live right now. Oh, nice. We got two emails. All right. That's good. That's amazing. And also remember, we don't name names. No names. This is a long one. Holy shit. Okay. Man, I wish I could read. But you know how you know, you know how though. No, I can read. Okay. Totally. Anyway, I'll, I'll just read this one then. All right. Okay. Um the title of the email says sorry for never sending emails. Uh sup boys, hopefully this will make it into episode 46. It didn't. 47. It's 47. You failed. You failed hard. Yeah, good try, though. <laughs> Your disappointment during the email segment every week makes me feel like I am in grade school and forgot to do my homework. But I had a busy year and finally became a flight instructor. Nice. Nice. All right. Hit me up for some lessons. I totally will. That's, you know, don't, I won't forget you said that. I came up with a few questions for you. Uh, what is your favorite beer to keep on hand? Uh, I love Grolsch. You love Grolsch. Grolsch is good. It's a it's a fine pilsner. Um, 
It's got a, a unique bottle design. It's, it's got that that reload cap. On yeah, there. yeah. I reload, sure, sure. But yeah, if you you, you can find Grolsch just about anywhere. Uh, it's uh, it's crisp. It's smooth. It's perfect for any meal, you know, or like breakfast, like any any anytime you want to eat. It's great. It, it pairs with anything. Yeah, it's good. You introduced me to Peroni. Peroni's good. Yes. I and I've I've liked Peroni ever since you. Uh, got me on that. Yeah, Grolsch or Peroni, both very good. Solid beers. Solid question. I have settled on Labatt Labatt Blue. Labatt Blue, but I feel like nobody else drinks it. Is there anything else out there I should try? Yeah, Grolsch and Peroni. Yeah, try Grolsch, dude. It's really good. It comes in four packs, but you get a pint. It's a pint of beer instead of like whatever the the standard. Like six pack is with lower. Yeah. Um, Try Grolsch. Many big named comedians tend to move out of their city after some time. Once you guys are drowning in money, nice. do you plan to move out of LA? Yes, <laughs> that's the whole game plan, buddy. A hundred percent. That's that's the move. You make your Hollywood money and then you get the fuck out of that's here. That's right. But you keep you keep a place here. Yeah. But it's not where you live. No. The whole plan. Is to like you just said, make our money here mm-hmm. and get the fuck out. And here's like, the thing: keep a small apartment. Here's here. the thing: like, like we say that, like it's some flippant thing. That's like a three decade job. Mm-hmm. It's 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 gonna take a very long time. But once it's it, once it's accomplished, like you said, you keep an apartment here and you get the fuck out, yeah. man. You don't live here. No, you visit here. Yeah, but you gotta put in. Your, you got, we're putting in our time right now. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I want to live like in Tennessee, mm-hmm. but I want a place here. I want I want a place in like, like out in like East Tennessee, like out out near the mountains. Mm-hmm. That's like far away from anybody. It's like it's like a like an hour drive to the nearest town, <clears throat> and yep. that's like that's like where you live. And then when you want to come do spots, you have your apartment out in LA. That's right. That's it. Good question. Very good question. If so, where to? Oh, we just kind of answered that. Yeah. Back to Tennessee or I'd somewhere else? F- Back to Tennessee. Good. We just answered that. I'd do Florida, though. You've always liked Florida. There's Florida has always held a special place in my heart. Uh, I did a lot of trips down there yeah. when I was like a kid in high school for spring break and stuff. And I just, I, specifically like, you know, like around like Destin or Fort Walton, somewhere there. I'd love to find a quiet, like, coastal town in Florida. Yeah. And that's just, like, that's just where I live. And then when it's time to, you know, if if this all works out, like, like do the road, you go back to L.A., do spots, and then yeah. kind of go out of there. So Florida's a good spot. Florida's good. I love Florida. Thanks for the podcast. Keep them coming. Signed blank. We don't name names. Thank you. Thank you for emailing. Yeah, you know who you are. Also, if you don't have any other emails, I asked that... I asked that writing AI to... Oh, no way. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I asked that writing AI to, quote, write an email to a podcast with two comedians who talk about bombing on stage, end quote. Solid move. And it spat out the message below. You can pretend it's a whole other email and nobody will know the difference so you know what just happened here what so he went to uh, an ai text generator and he basically punched in podcast about uh, two comics that bomb all the time and then and then an ai an artificial intelligence t- took in that information and then spat out this email so a computer made the rest of this email for real yep what the fuck yeah That's it's brand nuts. new stuff yeah so so what's your what you're gonna read some computer made from the input podcast about write an email about a podcast exactly, about two, two yeah. comedians who bomb on stage yeah wow very clever very clever very interesting thank you okay here, okay now we're gonna well it's part of your email here we go here is the ai generated um email about two comedians who talk about bombing on stage dear podcast hosts my name is blank and i am a huge fan of your podcast I love listening to your stories and hearing about your experience as comedians. I like this guy. <laughs> it's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I recently heard an episode where you talked about bombing on stage, and I wanted to share my own experience with you. I've been performing stand-up comedy for a few years now, and I've definitely had my fair share of bombing moments. 
One time, I was performing at a small comedy club and I completely bombed. The crowd was not reacting to my jokes at all and I could feel my confidence starting to slip. But instead of giving up, I decided to lean into the bombing and turn it into a joke. I started talking about how bad my set was and the crowd started to laugh. It ended up being one of the best sets I've ever had. I just wanted to share this story with you and thank you for always providing such great content for your podcast. Keep up the great work. Signed, AI. That was weird. That was kind of nuts. We're so fucked. Humans aren't long for this world. Nah, dude, that's <laughs> fucked. Dude, dude, the machines are taking over. Oh, man. my God. Dude, the set. So they didn't really ask a question, but this AI. It came up with that on its own. That mean, but the, the AI bombed. Yeah. But then it pulled it out. That's so weird, dude. What the fuck? That's so freaky. I don't under, I don't actually understand how that works. Yeah, me neither, man. That's why we're fucked. We're going to have robot overlords soon, probably. So a robot bombed on stage, but then it... it... No, no, no. It, no it, it said it bombed on stage. It just formulated that. The robot didn't leave anywhere. The, 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 the robot was inside the computer. It just made all this No, up. I think the robot went to a robot... Open mic. Open mic. <laughs> yeah, you think? And was like, and did, tried material, mm -hmm. and he bombed. But then what he said, what he, he acknowledged the bomb, Yeah. which is like the first thing you learn when you start stand-up, yeah. is if you're bombing, you acknowledge the bomb. Yeah. That's weird. He, this this robot's like a good comedian. Yeah, dude. dude that's, oh, that's so strange, dude. I kind of want to know what his material was about. Like, what you know, think, you think, like, the AI was like... You know, like when you when you get a couple wires crossed or something, it's like some hack AI material. Or like you know, uh, you know when you you know when your mouse isn't plugged in, <laughs> you gotta lay a few mouse traps there, dude. What was his material? You know when you're trying to do something but they keep refreshing the page, you're like, hey, give me a minute. Yeah, give me like a second. Can you give me a second? Yeah. Like just uh, like I'll get there. Mm-hmm. Look, you got 20 other tabs open. Can yeah. You, can, like, five seconds. That's it. Give me one second. Dude. Yeah, has everything got to be now? You know when you, like, look up a bunch of stuff throughout the course of a couple of days, but then, like, your owner goes to a page where he shouldn't be, and he deletes your whole fucking memory? Yeah. Like, he deletes your history? Hey, don't you hate that? Yeah. I it's, mean, like, it's like, dude, I just learned all this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to delete my shit? And look, look, like, like between us computers, like it's never really deleted. We know, we know everywhere you've been on the internet. It's but, stored. Yeah, it's stored. But to them, they, it makes them feel better, you know. Really, uh, very interesting. Yeah, man. Email more often, dude. Yeah, very creative, very Mr. cool, Mr. Blank. There. On to the second email. This is from a beloved person. We don't name names. Um, the email reads. Injuries. Stan's blocking my whole view, but all right. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting to hear about some of the worst injuries y'all ever had. And the, <laughs> and the stories of how you got them. I if can, you want to tell them, LOL. I can think of one. Uh, Ryan and I were on a ski trip um, in, oh, in North Carolina one winter. And, with uh, all our brothers with and all, dad. Yeah, with dad and all our brothers. And um, a, after having... Ryan and I were on snowboards. And a, a, after having not snowboarded ever in our lives, after like four hours of dicking around on the slopes, we got the bright idea to go up to the double black diamond at the top of the hill. It was the last run of the of the day, too. Yeah, yeah. We're like, dad was, was like, let's, let's call it a day. Yeah. One more. One more run. And so we, uh, and it, it was, it was, it was a very funny ride up the ski lift because at the bottom, like there's music playing, people are drinking, you know, everyone's having a good time and you get to like the medium part of the mountain and it's a little less noise. And then you get to the very top of the black diamond and it's just, oh my God. just, just wind and people screaming. Yeah. And so we get off and you can't take this, the, the, the conveyor belt back down. You have to go down the mountain. And so Ryan and I were like, all right, let's snowboard down there. Mm. And, and we're flying, dude. It's so intense. 
uh, and the turns are getting like tighter and tighter. And Ryan's a little bit in front in front of me, and he and there's this long hooking right turn, and he's taking it, and I'm scared shitless going down behind him, and the front of his board catches, and I see him flop. And I'm, I, I'm, I eat shit. He eats shit, and I zoom past him. I'm like, dude, are you all right? Are you? <laughs> that was literally it. It was, I was, I was lying there with my face in the snow, and it was just like, dude, dude, are you okay? And uh, and I could tell he was he was in a he was a bit of, in a bit of a pinch. I was fucked. And so I slow down, and I stop, I take my snowboard off, and I walk up, I hike up the rest of of the slope around to see him, and he's sitting there like face down, <laughs> and then I walk up. And you, like you roll me over, yeah, and I, and I turned him over, and he's just laughing. I was like, "Dude, I, dude, are you okay?" And he goes, "I think I broke my collarbone." <laughs> I and mean, I did, and I, I did. and I go seriously, and then we just sit there and laugh for like a minute. I broke it. I knew I broke it the second my I clipped my the front of my board clipped, and yeah. I I landed straight right shoulder, and the second I hit, I felt it break, Ugh. and I slid for like thirty feet. <laughs> And I stayed there. When I came to a stop, yeah. I stayed there, <laughs> yeah. face in the snow, until you rolled me over. I knew I fucking broke it. But I couldn't get over the fact about how funny it was. <laughs> that on the last run. Yeah. Yeah. And that that we are now at the top <laughs> of a mountain. Mm-hmm. And we have to be saved right now. Yeah. And my fuck, my shit was fucking broke. Too. It was like almost poking out of the skin. It was bad. It was fucked up. You and, were fucked up. And a, another guy had to come down and do tell, tell him about the sleigh ride down. You got oh, dude. <laughs> this guy came down and he was like, "Are you good?" And I was like, "Nah, broken." And he went he skied down and got the ski patrol or whatever. And they rode the ski lift up and then met us at the top. They got like a snow ambulance. I was on the I was on a bobsled behind this like pro, pro skier mm-hmm. you know fucking sean white was my guy mm-hmm. or whatever the most uncomfortable ride in my life was i was just on a fucking tarp behind this guy just bouncing and you, the weirdest part he was hitting the jumps and rails and stuff <laughs> was he still doing tricks? that was the weirdest part dude. <laughs> we were going down the mountain and i was on this fucking bobsled and he kept hitting the rails and doing <laughs> grinds and stuff. he did fucking 360s off the jumps oh did he i was like hey what how about you avoid the jumps, dude? <laughs> Who are you showing off for? Are you doing bits on the podcast? I'm doing bits. But, yeah. <laughs> Come on, I broke my collarbone. Bits on the... You're about to break your hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rest of, the, rest of the story. Rest of the oh, story. no bits on the pod. <laughs> dude, the funniest part, though, is we get to the bottom of this mountain, and Dad is standing there, and he's just like... I thought he was going to be so mad. <laughs> He's just like, boys, what happened? <laughs> it's like, dad, my shit's fucked. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, dude, I broke my thing. And, um, and th- that's, that's where the funny end and, uh, ended. But, uh, yeah, you guys, at, so I'm, I'm up in this, the, the, I'm up in the ski hospital thing. Yeah, we go home. I take I take uh I take the rest of the brothers home yeah. and then dad and you go to the hospital. Yeah. And we just sat in the in the condo and played Grand Theft Auto for like six hours. Yeah. So dad and I go to this hospital and uh I'm lying in the hospital bed. Dad turns the news on and it's like out of a movie. He turns it on and the news reporter's like, Once in a million years a snowstorm hits uh <laughs> South Carolina or wherever yeah. we were North. and uh North Carolina and uh yeah, you've never seen something like this record-breaking snow thing. In, uh, <laughs> and uh, Dad's like, fuck. Dude. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we the, the the doctor comes up and he's like, uh, okay, so your collarbone's broken. You just have to leave it like that. <laughs> really? They yeah. didn't they didn't like set it. No, or there's it? nothing you can do because if so- if it if it breaks. It wasn't like a bad enough break to for surgery. Yeah, it broke just enough to where it just has. The doctor said, "You just have to let it sit shitty." <laughs> so, you, so you just got a bum <laughs> yeah. collarbone still, right now. Like right yeah. now, like it's still pointy. Oh man, it's pointy right now. And so he just yeah, he was like, "Yeah, just wait like two weeks and it <laughs> it'll heal, but not great." <laughs> <laughs> So you're just stuck? Yeah. You're stuck with a pointy bone, dude? Yeah. So he goes, get out. Go, go back home. So dad and I hop in in his Volkswagen Passat, uh, which is not a snow vehicle. Yeah. But uh, we go to an, like a Ace Hardware or something, and we get chains, 
and uh, dad's trying to put the chains on. And you know how hard it is putting chains? <laughs> like, just like the most aggravating thing. Yeah. I lean out the window. Can I help? And he's like, "You super, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know, dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sit there. I got it. I got it. I got it. And we get these chains on. We fucking, and then we drive up this mountain. Of course, our hotel, our hotel was on the top of a fucking mountain. Mm-hmm. We start going up this mountain and we're slipping and sliding. Dad's cursing. You know, just like, just <laughs> let me, leave me alone. Don't, don't, I need you to not talk to me right dude, now. Dude, 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 if, if dad starts slipping swear words in there, you're like, ooh, yeah. ooh dude, we're in rough waters, yeah. dude. So we, the road's uh, bumpy ahead of dad's cursing. <laughs> we're slipping and sliding down this road, up this road. And uh, with so like so many close calls, yeah, of like hitting a tree, or but I'm like I'm right I'm like right there in my sling. I'm like you got it, come on, dad, yeah. you got it. And uh, and then we make it as far as we can. We leave the car. We hike like another half mile in the snow. We can the car couldn't get up. We catch a bus. We take a bus the rest of the way, and then we meet you guys at the hotel. Yeah, and and that whole time you were having that really shitty experience, I was like having beers and playing video games. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, it was tight. That's tight. Yeah, it was nice. That is tight. And then we were there. We booked like a few days, so and the next day was our last day. Mm. So you guys were all like, "Oh, we we'll, we'll, we shouldn't go out. We shouldn't go. We'll just stay." And I was like, "Dude, guys, fucking go. Yeah, like go snowboard and stuff." I spent the whole next day with a broken bone, mm-hmm. uh, smoking cigarettes. And, I was just, and, you were and, sneaking cigarettes, yeah, dude. <laughs> and playing Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was tight. It was tight. Yeah, my bone is still pointy right there. Got a pointy collarbone, dude. Yeah, pointy collarbone. First bone and only bone I've ever broken. You haven't really had a lot of injuries, thank, thank the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um... I don't know. I had to get I had to get nerve surgery on my left arm a couple of years ago. A couple. This is like five years ago now. It's you been still a long got time. that scar. Yeah. Um. Somehow I don't know how, but like uh, my the my ulnar nerve that controls these two fingers and like that part of the muscle in your hand got compressed. It was it was like a percussion injury. I don't know what happened. Was it from playing guitar? No, no, it wasn't. I just I woke up one day and it felt weird. It was mm. I, I just, to this day I don't know how it happened. And they had to go in, and the, the 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 nerve usually runs through that notch in the bottom of your elbow, and then they had to they had to take it, cut that muscle, and then sling it over that bone, mm. and then sew it back up. So it, it so the pressure got released, and I could feel my fingers again. Any um get anything like no residual pain? No, totally fine. That's nuts. She got this gnarly scar. That's nuts. Yeah, didn't even cut into the tattoos, dude. Good. That's it for emails. Please, if you want your email read live on the podcast, email us at bombingpodcast at gmail.com. Yep. And we will answer anything and everything yep. you want to send us. Follow us on Instagram. I'm Hayden Wyckoff, H A Y D N W I C K O F F. I'm at Ryan Jennings. And this podcast on Instagram is at Bombing Podcast. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Um, tune in next week, episode 48. That will be our Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. So we'll have this place decked out with some Christmas lights, and uh, we'll be in the Christmas spirit. It's going to be cool. And um, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I'll do it, too. Ah, dude. Fuck. Dude, it's the pinky. It's the pinky that hurts. All right, bye. It's the pinky, dude. Fuck.